Today's presentation addresses guidance from authoritative organizations such as OSHA and Joint Commission with suggestions and some solutions. This information is not intended as legal or consulting advice. Check with your state to see if there are applicable rules your organization is required to follow over and beyond OSHA and when applicable, the Joint Commission. Let's review some advice from the Joint Commission, OSHA, and the American Society for Healthcare Risk Management. There are free resources, and they're valuable resources, especially for those healthcare organizations that are struggling financially during the pandemic. Your organization doesn't have to be accredited by Joint Commission to follow some helpful tips. And for those facilities accredited by Joint Commission, utilize the accreditation manual and follow the standards related to workplace violence. Utilizing OSHA guidelines offered free and follow all state mandates and requirements that are applicable to you. Documentation of each incident is critically important. Reporting a violent incident at work is voluntary. So it's possible that many healthcare workers who experience violence in their workplace ultimately do not report it. It's embarrassing. They may not have an easy way to report it. It could be their superior or a coworker and they don't wanna come forward. Each episode of violence or credible threat to healthcare workers warrants notification to leadership, to internal security and is needed even to law enforcement as well as the creation of an incident report. We have to get to the bottom of it, do a root cause analysis, and see what we need to do to intervene to make our healthcare institution a safe place. Tracking healthcare workplace violence is difficult because there are so often many different systems that healthcare workers might use to report an injury obtained during work, depending on the type of injury, where they were when they were injured, and other characteristics. The most common characteristic exhibited by perpetrators of workplace violence is altered mental status associated with dementia, delirium, substance intoxication, or decompensated mental illness. Also, one study showed that patients in police custody within a healthcare setting are involved in 29% of shootings in emergency departments, with 11% occurring during escape attempts. Hospital needs, they, we need to provide safeguards for the workforce in these situations and care for potentially violent individuals. Your organization should document and clearly define workplace violence. Implement a program which easily enables your workforce to report these types of events. Track and analyze reported incidents and make sure you follow up. Developing a strong safety culture is addressed by the Joint Commission and recommended by consultants and attorneys. It's a key aspect of ensuring both worker and patient safety. Leaders create and maintain a culture of safety and quality throughout the hospital or the healthcare organization is what's expected. Review cases and get to the root of the problem to develop appropriate interventions to reduce future incidents. Training. Can't emphasize that enough because training your workforce in conflict de-escalation techniques, self-defense, and emergency code response is also recommended by Joint Commission. Continue to evaluate to see if your initiatives are actually reducing incidents and stay informed about new initiatives to address workplace violence. The U.S. Department of Labor and OSHA suggests that an effective program to prevent reduce workplace violence should gain managerial staff commitment and worker participation, perform worksite analysis and identification of hazards for prevention and control, provide workforce health and safety training, and document evaluation of your program periodically. Violence in the workplace continues to be an area that risk managers need to be proactively preparing their institutions to prevent. At the same time, the risk managers need to know what to do in the event that they are faced with an immediate situation. The American Society for Healthcare Risk Management Toolkit is designed to assist in both of these areas. The URL hyperlink for this is on the slide. The American Hospital Association also offers 
resources located at aha.org and then just go ahead and key in workplace violence prevention resources and utilize that information. OSHA has free resources as well. The URL for the OSHA information regarding hospitals and workplace violence is on this slide for your reference entitled Preventing Workplace Violence in Healthcare. This wraps up our presentation, and I hope this information is useful to your organization. We realize larger healthcare corporations are likely to already be ahead of this issue. Our goal is to provide support and resources to practices and medical organizations seeking more information on various compliance topics. Please stay safe, and thank you to all the brave frontline healthcare workers and administrators working so diligently during these trying times. And make sure to watch the other video associated with this 